Hey everyone. Hi. Hi. So everyone, thanks for joining. Welcome to Sorry. <laughs> um, welcome to Food for Foodies, an educational webinar series for foodies who are hobbyists or professionals. We're here to provide insightful information to take your hobby or and or your career to the next level. If you are looking for health tips, life hacks, or recipes, go over to head over to foodforfoodies.co because we are also a blog. My name is Abyssinia, and I'm your host for today, and I'm here with lovely Crystal and Clancy. Hi. So some background on these beautiful ladies. Um, Clancy is the founder of For the, For the Culture magazine. So this is a magazine celebrating black women in the hospitality industry, which is amazing. So congratulations on that, Clancy. Yeah. Um, she's also been featured in New York Times, She's been featured in Food and Wine magazine. She's been featured in Bon Appetit magazine and many more. So I'm really excited to hear all of the advice that you have for us. And then Crystal, beautiful Crystal. She is a mother, a full-time blogger. She loves cocktails and she is <laughs> runs a successful blog known as Margaritas on the Rocks. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. love for cocktails. <laughs> So, yeah. by the way, I love your blog. Everything looks oh, so good you. on there. And it's so inspiring because I just started a blog and I'm looking oh. to take it to the next level. So, mm -hmm. along with mm -hmm. everyone else watching this, I'm really excited to learn a lot from you ladies. Okay, good. I'm excited um, to be here. <laughs> thank you. Um, I know I shared a little bit about you guys, but is there anything that you want to touch on that I didn't cover? Let's start with you, Crystal. Um, not really. I just want to preface this whole webinar by saying, and I, and I told her the same thing. I am not a chef. So I, you know, I don't have any culinary experience. I'm not a published author. I'm just a food blogger. So I want to put that out there ahead of time for you. <laughs> yeah. Which is great. I feel like it's great to have someone from all walks of life because a lot of the times, like you don't have to go to culinary school to become a chef. So there's so many ways to go about it. So I'm ha I'm so happy to have you on board because oh, I love your work. I feel like it's amazing. So thank you, thank you. Um, I think we're having trouble with Clancy's. Let's give her a second. Okay. To get back on. So yeah, guys, this is a very interactive live. If you're watching it through Facebook or YouTube or foodforfoodies.co, wherever you're watching it from, please do comment. Let us know anything that you're interested in learning about if we don't cover it, and we'll gladly touch on the questions that you have for us. All right, so we're waiting for Clancy to join us again, but um, we're gonna get started for the time being. Let's get into this. So what what tips do you have for somebody looking to start a blog? Like, where did you start? What's your story, your background? Uh, so let's see. So for me, I, I've been blogging for six years and I'd say like my love of food started early. I learned how to cook from my mom and my aunts. And they're from the South. So I, I learned how to cook from them and everything was always from scratch. Um, so the cooking bug, I guess, was planted early. And then as I got older and I started like watching television, I used to be really obsessed with the Food Network. And I yeah. used to watch it back in the day when um, Sandra Lee and Paula Dean were still on. So it was a long time ago. But I used to watch it all the time and just, you know, get excited about the recipes and the process. And um yeah, that was just something that I just kind of was obsessed with. And so I would say when Instagram first started, because I don't know if you remember, but it was really like heavily based on just photos, images. That was like the only thing that it was really. Mm -hmm. And so when I joined Instagram, I started following or really kind of searching for food images because I am a foodie first. I'm a foodie turned food blogger. So I was searching for a lot of images of food and I started 
to find images that were beautiful. And then I would go to the profile and then I would end up following this account. And that's how I discovered food bloggers in general. I didn't even know that was a thing until Instagram. So I, you know, kind of started following them, watching them. And then I saw that there was like a, a business aspect to it. And I just told my then boyfriend, now husband, I told him, I can do this. I, I can do that. You know, I think I can do it. And so, so I started, I did it. And so here we are. Um, and there's been some ups and downs. It hasn't been easy, uh, an easy ride for me. But six years later, I'm still here. I still have the blog. And so that's kind of the backstory for me. So how long did it take you before you started seeing success in your blog? Um, let's see. I would say six to seven months, maybe. Wow. It, it took a little while, um, but that was me. I mean, everyone's situation is different. That doesn't seem like that long because, I mean, some bloggers say three years, two years, five years. So. Um, well, when I, well, let's say maybe I define success as getting paid for my posts. That's my definition of a success. So if that's what you mean, then that is what I consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So six or seven months. Um, I was lucky enough to stumble across an affiliate program called Social Fabric. And um, that's a really good one for beginning bloggers. And if you're just starting out, what's it called? A social fabric. Social fabric. Okay. I'm yeah. If you Google that, and I don't have the exact, it's not dot com, it's something else. It's like dot us or something like that. But yeah, if you Google it, you should be able to find it. Um, but yeah, they basically work with brands and you have to apply. First of all, you have to apply, you have to get accepted. But once you're accepted, they work with brands and they bring you products. So let's say Kraft has a new cheese that they're coming out with. Well, they'll post this. They call it Shopportunities. They post the Shopportunity of the product and they, they have like a application that requests what your um, recipe idea would be. And that is how they're basically selecting who they're going to choose for that Shopportunity. And the, the Shopportunities can range in pay from... 160 all the way up to a thousand dollars depending on what they are asking you to do mm -hmm. and so that's a really good way i think to get started in um you know monetizing your blog in in this field is to kind of join an affiliate program and just kind of start working with different brands through that program okay um i can you tell us more about well i guess we should probably get into the affiliate programs later Okay, yeah, sure. Later in the convo, like when it comes to like monetizing and all of that. Because that was at the end anyway. So I don't know why I started talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we should probably just touch more on how to start and where to start. Okay. What would you say would be, I know you can really only go off of what you do, but mm -hmm. what would you say would be the best site to host your blog, um, the best platforms, like where to start? Do you recommend WordPress or versus Squarespace? So I use uh, WordPress and I actually, when I first started my blog, I used, there's two versions of it. There's a free version, which they own the site. And then there's the, the I guess I would call it professionals where you have to have a hosting service and all of that. So I started on the free one. And then when I got serious about wanting to kind of switch over business wise, I switched to the um, platform where I had to have the hosting subscription with it. So I think you, for me, I, I enjoy Bluehost. It's simply easy using it. Um, I don't have any complaints, but there are other ones that you can use. You know, you have to research and, and do what's best for you. Um, obvi obviously, you want to come up with a name. For me, my name was Margaritas on the Rocks, and that's what I went with. And then um, you want to get a domain. So I went to GoDaddy.com. I got a domain. And luckily, my name wasn't taken, so I was able to get that. Um, so I think you would obviously start there for building your website. But I, I like to say before you even get there, I really think that you should research. And the reason why is because there's so much that you don't know going into it. If, if I knew some of the stuff that I know now, back then, I'd probably be way further along. Um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of different places that you can go to learn about blogging from like A to Z. One of those sites is um, called Pinch of Yum. Pinch of, Pinch of Yum. And they have a course that you can sign up for and you do pay on it monthly. It's not it's not that much. I don't know how much it was, but it's not that much, but it's worth it. And you only have to do it for as long as you need. So I think I was on it for like two months 
But it goes literally from A to Z, even setting up a blog, how to do that, all of that, photography, writing, styling, everything, it's all there. So I think that's important to kind of research what you're doing before you start. Um, also, you want to kind of learn about, when I first started, I didn't know a lot about SEO or Google rankings. And, and to be honest, I'm still not a pro with it, but I know enough to, you know, what to put in my post to get, you know, get it picked up by Google or get it ranked. So you want to search things like that. I mean, don't get too caught up in research, you know, where, where you don't start, but try to learn a little bit before you get started so you're not going in blind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Clancy, welcome back. <laughs> Hi. So we're just um, going over the beginning stages of blogging, like where to start. Um, do you want to just tell the audience like what you what you focus on mostly and a little bit more about yourself? Um, what, my, my sound for some reason is breaking up. I'm not sure why, cause my internet connection is okay. But, um, you want to ask my, what's my focus? Yes. Okay, I think her her thing broke out again. Okay. So unfortunately, we'll have to proceed without her. And I was really looking forward to hearing. I know I was too, ladies. But <laughs> maybe next time. Okay. Um. So yeah, Pinch of Yum. I actually know of them for their recipes, right? Yes. Is it a recipe blog? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. A very popular recipe blog. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know they offered classes. That's good to know. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. So, whoops. Sorry, guys, we're having some technical difficulties, but we'll get back on it. All right, so let's see. So, what inspired? So, you said you were inspired to start doing your blog, and then you just got started. Like yeah, I just got started. Yeah, <laughs> and like I said, I went through the motions of naming it, getting a domain, getting a hosting service, and then. Um, I would say if you're starting, like if we're going through the steps, this is what I'm going to offer as some advice and you, you know, maybe it's helpful, maybe it's not, but I'm just going to go through it kind of like how I did it. So I think that what's really important. The next step is finding your voice or the sweet spot is what I like to call it. And what I mean by that is, you know, what type of blogging or writing style do you want for your food post? What types of recipes do you want to make? Um, what type of photography styles do you want for your images? Like those are things that are going to identify your brand, but set you apart from everyone else. Right. So in the beginning, I really, so like I said, I was on Instagram and I was following a lot of different bloggers and I was obsessed. Okay. I struggled in the beginning with making sure to keep my own voice and my own style. Right. Cause I was like, okay. I follow all these bloggers, they're all great. And oh, I love how she does this and I love how she does that and blah, blah, blah. And so I started kind of, and don't do this. I started kind of mimicking what I was seeing them do. So an example of that is banana bread. Okay, there's like a thousand banana bread recipes online. Seriously, like you can Google it. And really there's not much you can do to banana bread. It's a great recipe, but sorry, that's no sorry. Uh, but oh, there's yeah. not a lot that you can do to it. So I, I was like, oh, well, they all have banana bread recipes. So I need a banana bread recipe. Here I go doing a banana bread recipe. And to be honest, I didn't get much engagement. And it really was kind of lost because it was one recipe in an ocean of banana bread recipes. So I was doing that for a little while. And it, it became kind of, um, I got I became uninterested in blogging at, at a certain point because I didn't feel that I was being creative and I didn't feel like I was being organic. And I was really being creative was one of the main reasons why I started doing it in the first place, because I like to create. So if I'm not going to do that, then I kind of felt like there was no point. So I kept the blog going. I mean, I paid my renewal subscriptions and everything, but I just wasn't as active. Um, and so if you can avoid in the beginning not following others and kind of just, you know, d defining your own voice. That would be my best advice to you uh, starting out. <laughs> okay. Hey, Clancy. <laughs> 
So um, we just touched on like her inspiration and she was saying it's good to find your voice. Would you say that's similar to, to your niche? Do you think you have to find one thing and stick to it or can you like jump around? Oh, we can't hear you. Oh. I really, really am so interested to hear her thoughts. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We do while Clancy um gets her audio. We're going to answer this question from Rob. He's asking here. He's asking what actually is blogging. For me, blogging is me creating a recipe and uh, writing a small description or a passage about that recipe and taking photographs and kind of combining all those things and putting them in a blog post that's published to everyone for everyone to see. Um, when I first started out, I was more of a narrative style blogger. So it would be something like, oh, when I was a kid, I loved peaches and now I'm gonna make some peach cobbler today or you know, whatever. And so I just kind of, dr I drifted away from that, but a lot of bloggers still do that. And also um, some bloggers are very informative with the way that they, they uh, post. But either way, blogging to me is creating a recipe, writing about that recipe, taking amazing photos that go with it and posting it for the world to see. Mm -hmm. Awesome, so let's talk about, so once you have your blog up, um the starter site so the starter site is pinchofyum.com it's in mm -hmm. the comment section so pinchofyum.com so um once you have your blog up and you have all of your seos done which you could find a lot of that on youtube right and then these mm -hmm. youtube pinterest yeah um, so once you have all of that started, how do you get into monetization and the affiliate programs and what's the breakdown for all of that? Uh, so first you want to, when you're first starting out, you're a new blog. So you got to kind of establish yourself. And for me, that was being consistent with posting new recipes and new content. Because when you want to apply for these programs, they are, they're going to look at your work and they're going to see, you know, does she post? What does she post? How nice is it? So you kind of want to focus on, like I said, identifying your brand and making a presence online for yourself. That way, when you get ready to apply to, which I highly suggest, again, Social Fabric for Beginners, um, they have something that they can look at and say, OK, we want to give this person a chance or, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the that is, for me, that was the easiest way to get into monetizing my blog. Now, from that, I have been able to contact blogs, I mean, contact brands directly. Either I contact them or they contact me. And I'm able to be paid that way as well doing sponsored posts. But that's, that is something that is a little bit down the line once you've kind of, you know, established yourself and got some credibility behind you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then how would you go about building your following and getting and becoming known? Um, man, that takes, it takes, it takes time. I mean, you have to, um, one, you've got to be consistent, which is something that I've struggled with. Um, you've got to be consistent and you have to be active and present online. Um, my advice, when I first started blogging, I was told to get on every social media site there was. And if I'm giving advice, I'm going to tell you, I would prefer for you to stick on to social media sites that you're actually active on and you actually like to use. An example of uh, what I mean is back in the day, well, not that long ago, but Google Plus, you know, Google Plus, that was like kind of a social media platform, but it never really picked up. But I was on there and I didn't even use it. I never interacted with anyone. I didn't really want to be there. The real like plus to it was that whenever you post it, it would kind of go into your Google ranking and it would help kind of move your, you know, site up on the list. But other than that, I, I didn't spend much time there. So I would say, make sure you're always online, posting content, being active. Like if someone likes your photo or comments, comment back, you know, mm -hmm. um, interact with other food bloggers because sometimes I do collabs, I do collabs with other people. And from those collabs, I'm able to gain new followers through them. So 
just having a really active presence online and being consistent. Because the thing is, when people start to latch onto you, they'll expect something from you. And if they don't get it, they'll fall off, you know? Mm -hmm. So is there a way for you to, um, is there a networking group for all these food bloggers? Like where would somebody go to meet influencers? Should we just follow on Instagram or is there like specific groups? I don't know about any groups. I, I've met all of my blogger friends through just going on Instagram and following them, writing them and just interacting with them online. You know what I mean? I don't know about any group. There probably are some, oh, actually, no, there are some groups. There are Facebook groups for food bloggers. If you go to like, I think you could search groups in Facebook if I'm not mistaken. And if you like search like foodie groups or food bloggers, I'm sure you'll find some. And most of them, I think you have to like join and be approved, but you can do that that way. And, and that's a community of people who are all kind of um, su supporting you in the sense that they'll share your links and they will, you know, watch your content to kind of help you get your views up and, and things like that. But for me, I had better luck with just following people online and just, you know, becoming friends with them or virtual friends, I guess, <laughs> with them. Okay. So we're getting somewhere. All of this is very helpful information. Like I'm learning a lot okay. <laughs> listening to this right now. What <laughs> else do you have for, for the foodies, right? Listening. Um, let's see. I have like a bunch of points. And so I'll just touch on them. Tell me if they're interesting or not. So, um, I kind of wanted to go back. You asked a question about should you stay in your niche, niche, niche mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I think it's in, for me at first. At first, I was a lifestyle or food and lifestyle blogger, which I don't know why I did that. Again, saw someone else was doing it or a lot of people were doing it. And so I did that. But I don't really post about anything with beauty or fashion. I don't do that. So mm -hmm. drop that. OK, so I'm not doing that anymore. I think it is important to stick to a certain thing because sometimes when you bounce around too much, people get confused and they don't really realize, like, let's say someone's following me because they saw my food photos. Right. And then all of a sudden I'm like for a week straight posting about clothes. They're like, wait a minute. I follow her because of these food photos and now she's talking about clothes. And so it kind of throws them off. So I would stick to one thing if you can, unless you are both, then obviously you'll mix it up. But I think it's important to just stay with that. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing I wanted to say was this goes back to kind of um, finding your own voice. Uh, I, w I follow, like I said, a lot of food bloggers and there was a food blogger that did a live and one of his followers asked, you know, how do I become a food blogger? Oh, oh there. <laughs> Wait, now I have to, okay, yay. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Thank God. <laughs> wow, I'm happy it works. Yeah. I know. So um, we were just going over finding your niche and just kind of like sticking with it. Right. So, so Crystal was telling us about how when she first started, she did lifestyle and food blogging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so well, my tech, my technical difficulties didn't allow my answer to come through, which was. Um, I'm a big believer in following your curiosities. So, you know, you may be curious, i.e. your interests and your interests may stay focused on one thing or they may evolve with time um, and with different experiences. So I think that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you should only be doing, it's only going to be, whatever you're writing about is only going to be an enjoyable experience and worth the time if you're interested in it. Mm -hmm. um, but we all know that what we're interested in may shift and change, um, yep. even if it stays within a certain category, such as food. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so did you wanna share with everyone what your focus is between like food writing and blogging, which one you're mostly on, or if they're the same, like? I don't even know if you would consider them both in the same category or completely separate. Um, I kind of am of the opinion that writing is writing. Um, although, you know, you're, there are different ways of writing. There are different mm -hmm. formats. Um, I've worked on cookbooks. I have my own cookbook, Cooking Solo. I've done recipe development. 
um, for different publications. I started out with a blog when I graduated from my path. I'll like try to explain my path. I um, went to culinary school in Paris. I went to Le Cordon Bleu. I did their pastry program. And then I worked in, um, I worked in a bakery in Paris. I worked in a three-star Michelin restaurant. And at a certain point, I realized that restaurant life was really hard <laughs> and hectic. Yeah. And I was like, I was in my early 20s and like, my knees hurt. <laughs> so at a certain point, I thought, okay, I need to figure out another way to be in the world of food, but maybe not restaurants, mm -hmm. even though I love them. And so I was lucky that a job opened up in recipe development or in the recipe development department of Le Cordon Bleu. So that was kind of my first step out of the kitchen into the world of writing about food, focused specifically on recipes. Um, and I kind of started freelance writing when I was still in Paris. Uh, and then when I came back to the States, I took a food writing class with this really uh, great uh, like restaurant critic food writer, Alan Richman. Mm -hmm. And his whole thing is like, you just need to be writing. Yeah. So I started a blog called Clancy's Potluck. And that's how, that was my vessel. That was my way to practice the skill of writing mm -hmm. and to kind of keep my eyes open about food and wine and to just write about whatever I was interested in. So it could be it, it, like a recipe I was trying out or a restaurant I had just gone to, or maybe a trip I had just taken, mm -hmm. but all obviously through my lens usually focused on food and wine, maybe a sprinkling of travel. Mm -hmm. And then I started, I wanted to make some money and I didn't know, and I was looking for a job and I didn't know how to monetize my blog. So I kind of did a whole bunch of informational interviews with um, like food editors and restaurant critics, just a whole bunch of people in food media. And, um, I was happy to learn that some of the people I've looked up to would, were reading my blog, but then basically I got a literary agent and I started working on like ghost writing. I don't even know if I, what question I'm answering now. But like, I think you're um, telling your path. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'm telling you my path. Um, so yeah, I started doing freelance writing, ghost writing, meaning uh, working with a chef, who, you know, his profession is to be a chef. I'm a writer. So brought on to write a project for him and also a wine person. Um, and then I realized that I'm not really, I don't love ghost writing. I, like it, it takes a very specific skill to take on another person's voice mm. to do it really well. And I think as a writer, one of the things you want to do is to express your voice and your opinion and your perspective. And so that's basically how my cookbook came along. I had a book proposal I worked on before that um, about my time in Paris, but it got rejected by several, I'm trying to get in the camera. It got rejected by several, um, 30 publishers. Oh, man. Um, yeah, but you know, whatever. Rejection just keeps me, stronger. Sure. No, sure. <laughs> um, and then I worked. Yeah. So I got rejected a lot. Then I worked on a long project for a chef. Then I started writing uh, the book proposal for my uh, cookbook, Cooking Solo. And I have to say that project opened up a lot of doors for me because uh, when you write a book, you have to do a lot of your own PR, basically. Same with blogging. You have to, you are the engine. You have to do it all. And so when you write a book, unless you're super famous, like Michelle Obama, or, you know, like you have to create your own tour. You have to create these relationships with mm -hmm. media outlets, magazines, websites, blah, blah, blah. And so, the hard part is that you have to pivot from writing the book and testing all these recipes 
to becoming a publicist and like a special events planner. But the good part about that is that A, you're getting new skills and B, for me, I was able to write about more aspects of food, promote my book, get some clips. Like I was able to write for the Washington Post and Bon Appetit and Food 52 and Cherry Bomb and other publications. And then, you know, that kind of help. And then I started being invited to participate in a whole bunch of events and panels. And so I started meeting more and more people and developing more relationships and being asked to, uh, right for different publications. So doing recipe development for food and wine, Mm -hmm. doing recipe development for the New York Times. So that has been fun for me. And then it's like fast forward a little bit. Um, Basically, there's I with over the past few years, I felt like I've met so many black people who are doing amazing things in food and specifically a lot of black women. Mm -hmm. And I over again, over the past like 24 months or so thought like, we should get our own magazine. (laughs) We should get our (laughs) own something because there's so we're often like the sprinkles, Mm -hmm. but there's so much being done across the country. And I'm interested in the entire diaspora. So throughout the world, black women are doing interesting things in food really vital, interesting, fun, like envelope pushing things in food. So that's where the idea for For the Culture came from. So For the Culture, uh, the full title is For the Culture, a magazine celebrating black women in food Mm -hmm. and wine. So yeah, that's what I've been working on throughout this pandemic. the I did a crowdfunding campaign. I feel like I'm talking so much, but I'm trying to get it in there. No, okay. so many- <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So in December, I started a crowdfunding campaign to raise money for For the Culture. Um, uh, and yeah, it was successful. It ended in early February. Um, and so, like, I had, I feel like I had like a month to take in the success of the crowdfunding campaign and then like, boom, pandemic. Um, But yeah, so I have been working on going through the pitches that have been received and figuring out a printer to print the magazine because it's going to be a printed magazine Um, and slowly assembling like a team of writers and advisors and photographers. I wanted to ask you, when you said you were doing the ghostwriting and writing for these magazines, one, were you doing freelance or were you, did you have a part-time job aside or were you getting paid to do that? I've always had a lot of jobs. Like I, I, um, yeah, I've always had a, a, like a, a main job and maybe sometimes a couple of jobs on the side. Um, I, yeah, and thank you for asking that because I feel like one of the things that's not uh, talked about enough in the media world and in the writing world is like, how do you make a living? You know what I mean? Like, how do you pay your bills? Mm -hmm. Um, Especially like I'm a single person. Uh, I totally uh, do not think that marriage means that automatically all your bills are paid. But, you know, (laughs) have like I'm responsible for everything. You know what I mean? So I've always maintained like a job. And then I've always done like when I was working at Le Cordon Bleu doing recipe development, that was my like job job. And then I would do freelancing on the side. Um, When I started my blog, when I was back in the States, I had... A ser- I think I had like two or three jobs. I like was making it work. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, I work. I also write in an entirely different field um, that allows me to I it is my foundation that allows me to be creative with my other writing. 
Okay. And I do think you kind of need to figure out what is your foundational financial work going to be. By, by financial, I mean, how are you going to pay your bills? Mm -hmm. Because um, it's kind of a sidebar, but related. Have you ever heard of the book um, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert? I no. Okay. Yeah. So I highly recommend it for you all and everybody listening and watching. Um, one of the points she makes in this book, so Elizabeth Gilbert is the woman who wrote Eat, Pray, Love that became like a big movie with Julia Roberts. Mm -hmm. And one of the points she makes in this book is that when she decided she wanted to be a writer decades ago, she made a deal with herself that she wasn't going to require her writing to pay for everything mm -hmm. because she her opinion was that if she put that much pressure on her creative life, mm -hmm. that that could soak all the creativity and magic out of her creative life. Mm -hmm. So she was like, you know what? I can always waitress. I can always do X, Y, and Z. My writing is for me. This is where I am feeding myself and where I'm interacting with creativity. So I can, I can raise money for the other parts of my life and not and save the writing, save the creative outlet for that focus, for it to be an outlet, for it to be creative. And if it makes money, beautiful, amazing. But so I've kind of adapted that, that also because being totally honest, when I did start freelance writing after I came back to the States, and have my like three or four jobs. It was stressful. I didn't like, I was financially, I was like, this is, this is really hard to mm -hmm. be like full on freelance all the time, constantly chasing money. So mm -hmm. that's my personal thing. Like have a good foundation and then hopefully you can build your writing to a place where it is fully supporting you, mm -hmm. but it's okay. You're still a writer your work is still vital and important, even if it's not paying 100% of all your bills. Well, I do have a question for both of you ladies. Um, like, How would you go about getting your work featured in these articles or even whether it's paid or non-paid? So how about both? What's the, what's the process for getting both? When you say featured, what do you mean? Like publications, like a magazine? Or? Yes, publications. Uh, uh, for me, I was I had a photo of mine that was featured. You probably have more, Clancy, more experience with this. But for me, I had a picture that was featured in Essence Magazine. Ooh, it was one of my margaritas. Yes. And, awesome. that, and that was completely organic. They just contacted me and wanted to use it. So I said, yeah, sure. So and I didn't get paid for it. <laughs> I just got credit for it, which probably stupid on me. But anyways, that was kind of my experience with that. I don't have a lot of experience with being published. So maybe Clancy probably has more information on that. Um, I think it's important to it's important to pitch. Um, I can, it's also I think it's important to build relationships with people mm -hmm. um, who you respect in your field. Uh, to ask for informational interviews so you can ask questions like what you just asked. Mm -hmm. And also so that, you know, if you're building a relationship, building a rapport with an editor who has the power to accept a pitch of yours or to pitch you an idea, like that's important. I have done both. I definitely have not been paid for work for things I've written. And like, I've had a couple of photographs. I'm not a photographer, but I've had a couple of photographs published and definitely not been paid for them. Um, sometimes that's good, though, because it is nice to have the clips and it's nice to be able to say, you know, you had a photo yeah. in Essence or New York Times mm -hmm. or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can honestly say the entirety of my working life has been built on relationships, mm -hmm. all of it, 100%. I can almost trace every dollar I've earned to, mm -hmm. oh, that person hooked me up. That person introduced me to this person. That person referred me to this person. So I think it's really key to constantly, constantly build relationships 
and not in a greedy way, like mm. with your hands out, but in a way of like, I really respect your work. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I think social media is great for that. Like Instagram is amazing for that. Just in terms of like posting on, I mean, commenting on people's posts mm -hmm. or like, I met somebody in Atlanta at like Linux Square who follows me and like <laughs> had this sweet moment. And it's just like, and we were just two human beings. It wasn't about work or anything, but like you can have those moments with people you respect in your mm -hmm. field. And I think that can help you get month, get gigs and assignments that will pay you. Okay. So we do have a question that just came in online, but um, I'll let you guys, I'll get to that after. I'll let you guys continue with them. So what would you say, what's the difference? Because I don't think we really covered it. What's the difference between food writing and food blogging? I'm Clancy. <laughs> I don't think there is a difference. You know, I don't, I, don't, I mean like, like I said, I, for me, writing is writing, mm -hmm. um, whether you're writing for a magazine, a blog, a newspaper, a book. Okay. Um, I think there are different parameters and different things you have to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are in Crystal, can I, I heard what you were saying, Crystal, even though you couldn't hear me. Oh. <laughs> like, there are things you have to research. There are things you have to know about when you're doing a blog. And if you're taking it seriously, mm -hmm. like, you know, the SEO thing, the whole, like you can monetize a blog. You can get people like doing ads. You can get like, there are a number of things specific to blogging that are mm -hmm. not specific mm -hmm. to recipe development or writing features for magazines or newspapers, but the skill of writing, I think, is the same. It's just that some is a little more specialized, just like recipe writing isn't the same as doing profiles on chefs or, you know what I mean? Um, but I think the key is writing well, having passion and expertise about what you're writing. Mm -hmm about and yeah but for me i don't see i see skill sets that are slightly different but mm -hmm. also skill sets that are similar okay i agree <laughs> i mean I, I i feel like i think it's completely different only because you're you're saying oh i just have this little blog on the web versus like oh i'm writing for the washington post but i see what you mean writing is writing at the core of it all so that makes sense mm -hmm. okay so this is, I guess this question is more to, I guess it could be both for food writing and food blogging, but when it comes to the photos and putting your work out there, I know we're gonna, guys, all the foodies who are watching right now, we're going to touch on food photography and food styling tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a whole hour long session, but I do wanna just briefly touch on it when it comes to your blog. Like how do you know the right angle, the right lighting, which pictures to pose, what will go viral. Clancy, do you want to go or do you want me to go? Yeah, no, you go. I don't know. Um, so I think that it's a it's a learning process. Can you pull up those photos that I was that I told you about? Um, I will give it a shot, but okay, let me let's see. Going while I attempt. So it's it's, <laughs> a, it's a process. Um, when I first started out with blogging, I didn't know much about photos at all. But um, you um, can you see my screen right now? I hope not. I can't. I okay. cannot. Okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a chaotic screen like mine? Yes. I have some tabs open. Yeah, there's so much going on here. <laughs> but sorry to interrupt you, Crystal. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, what was that? What was I saying? Oh, I didn't know much about it. I just had a DSLR camera, and I was like, okay, I can take pictures with this, you know. And I assumed the camera would do all the work. And at that time, I, I still thought I was doing like a really great job because I didn't know. Um, but over time, when you start to kind of, you know, look at other bloggers, you start to notice oh, my pictures don't look like that. So yeah. that was a, a process of me having to really say, OK, if I'm going to do this, I need to be serious about it. And I need to research and study how to take better photos and how to style my food and how, you know, all of that. So pinch of yum. I said that earlier. But I'm going to say it again. That is. They have a whole course on the food photography section. And that 
taking that course really helped me, but also just kind of like going on Pinterest and seeing tips. There's also a YouTube uh, channel that I use. I think it's called, uh, let me see. Sorry, you guys. I'll find it in a second, but there's a YouTube channel that specializes in showing you how to take certain photos. And so it, you really have to um, research it and, and you know, do your best to kind of perfect it. I am not a photographer. I'll tell you that right now. I, in no way do I think I am. I'm not a food stylist either, but I know enough to take a beautiful photo and, you know, put it out for the public to see. I think I'm ready to share my screen. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Show the bad one first. That was like, and these are kind of similar recipes, actually. It's a stuffed French toast. Wait, but oh, you can see it? I can't see anything. Oh, I, <laughs> hold up. So I have to go. To okay, guys, you can you continue the combo while I do this? Oh, sure. So, um, <laughs> go ahead, Clancy, if you have anything. Um, well, I, Crystal, I have to say, like, you are actually saying things that my editor said to me when um, my cookbook was coming out, and he was like, when you have a book coming out, you kind of have to either be really strong across social media or pick mm -hmm. one and like just go for it. So I was going for Instagram mm -hmm. and I totally can relate to the, you know, you start out and you think you're doing something, but then you look at other people's stuff and it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're really like on top of this. Yeah. And then you have to like, you basically do have to decide how committed you are going to be. And while I think that is an example of something that's way more important for bloggers because so much is riding on like images mm -hmm. um, than it is for someone who maybe is just doing writing and not necessarily doing any blogging or reliant on mm -hmm. images. But yeah, I totally agree. You mm -hmm. kind of have to... Um, you have to figure out, you have to find your way. I, I don't want to say find your lane because I don't really believe in lanes, but you have to find, you have to figure out for yourself how much is photography going to be a part of mm. your area of work. Because there are actually a lot of food writers who are pretty hardcore into their food photography as well. But I think you have to figure out what percentage of your work requires that. Mm. But I do think it's important to, you know, bone up on your skills. Mm -hmm. I do. I think I'm able to do it. So let's give it a shot. We'll start with right. the first one. So this is just to show Ooh. the progression of my work. This was when I first started out. Um, uh, that looks like crap to me. Like looking at that now, I'm like, no. But that was where I started. And, you know, I didn't know much. And so I put that out and I thought it looked pretty good. So over the years, let's go to the next one. I've, I've learned a lot. So this is kind of the same recipe. This is a stuffed French toast recipe. And this second photo is um, stuffed French toast as well, but it's a croissant. You, can see, the, you can see the difference in the quality of it, the, the way that I've styled it. You, you know, yeah. so you kind of see that I realized that where I started is not, you know, probably the best. And so I did the work to get to where I am now with, um, the photos that I'm doing now. And I'm still not perfect. I'm still learning. That's another thing too. I think you should always know is you're always going to grow and learn. It's never going to be done unless you're just one of those people that think you know everything. I don't. Mm -hmm. So I'm always growing and learning. And, and so you start somewhere, but you'll get better. You just have to keep at it. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful picture. It is really beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Can you share, yeah. Right. <laughs> share a bit of info on your setup, like very quickly. Yeah. Um, how I take the photos. Yeah. So I, I use natural lighting. I always use natural lighting. So I always find a window to take my photos in front of. And I, and I have to make sure that the, the sun is just right. Cause if it's, you know, you can work around the sun, but I try to make sure it's like light, but not too crazy. And then as far as my backgrounds, I make those myself and you can buy them. I've seen really nice ones, but I, I'm always trying to do something on my own. So I go to like Home Depot and buy these um like i guess plywood planks mm -hmm. and now buy like contact or is it contact sheet or contact paper the the sticky one where you can they have like designs on it so you can do like marble or wood oh. and i'll just like 
stick them on the you know the wood and, and the poof there's a <laughs> there's your background and you can change it up as much as you want because this the the paper is really cheap and the wood is only like probably four dollars so mm -hmm. i make my own um as far as styling you'd be so surprised i've, I've been very surprised with myself I, sometimes i really pull stuff out of my you know what like i have taken photos and been like you have to make a background or you have to style this and i would just start pulling stuff out of the cabinets out of the fridge whatever and just kind of placing them and just trying to make it look really nice and i'm always so shocked at what i come up with is really is really interesting but um yeah i always want to make sure that there's something going on in the background Mm -hmm. I used to take photos and it would just be of that. And now I try to tell a story a little bit. So in that picture mm -hmm. specifically, you see that there's the French toast, but in the background, the story that's being told is you see the uh, confectioner sugar that's kind of, you know, a little bit of it sprinkled out because it has just been, you know, placed over top of the croissant. And then to the right and a little bit in the corner, you can see that there's a strawberry topping. So mm -hmm. I try to tell a little bit of a photo in all of my, I mean, a little bit of a story in all of my photos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. And mm -hmm. how do I put this back? Oh, you know. Okay, well, that's fine for now. <laughs> um, so that's just a little touch on food photography. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we're going to go in depth. We'll have an hour long seg segment of food styling, food photography. Um, but we have reached our hour, and I feel like that passed so fast. Mm -hmm. It went by so fast. I was interested in everything that was said. Do you guys have any questions before we log off? Everyone who's viewing this, please send in your questions so we can try to answer them quickly. And do you ladies have anything you'd like like the audience to know before we end our session today? Um, no, let's see. Oh, well, I, I do. I was kind of saying it. I was kind of saying it earlier, but I'm going to finish it really quickly. Um, there was a, a blogger that I follow and they did a live and someone asked them, you know, how do I become a blogger? And they basically told the person don't. And the reason why, was because yeah, mm -hmm. and the reason why was because they said that there are more established bloggers that have like a full-time staff that work for them and take all of their photos and help them with everything. And if you're a person that's just starting out, you won't be able to compete and you won't be able to keep up with those bloggers. And so I remember listening to that and thinking, shut the, you know what, up. Because I was thinking, this is, the internet is a very interesting place. People literally go online to find content to read and to watch and to look at. So I don't care if you're just starting out and there are a thousand bloggers ahead of you. Someone is always going to be interested in what you have to say. So never let anyone discourage you and tell you that you can't do something or it's too late. It's never too late. Put your content out. Make sure it's original and creative to your brand. And I guarantee you somebody is going to want to see it. Someone's going to read it. Someone's going to subscribe to it. And that's, you know, never let anyone tell you you can't do anything. <laughs> I agree. I it, Same. I think um, I, my advice is going to be keep doing what you're doing be open to growing, be open to learning, keep following your curiosity, keep following your interests um, and try not to be discouraged. This is coming from a person who got rejected by 30 different publishers. <laughs> but yeah, there's, uh, I don't know. I feel like there's some self-help guru I listen to who says the world is waiting for your voice or something like that. But the point is, there are, I totally agree with Crystal. There's always somebody who is going to resonate with mm -hmm. your point of view. Um, so keep going and yeah, have courage, have faith mm -hmm. and be open to making connections with people who resonate with what you're doing. Cause that's, that's one of the most exciting things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree a thousand percent. Never give up, keep going for it. Keep shooting for the stars, go after what you want. And you're gonna hear no, but don't stop. Like perseverance mm -hmm. and persistence will pay off a lot down the road. Mm -hmm. Totally. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in. Thank you, oh, thank you. for joining me. This was so informative. Great. I'm glad it was helpful. So thanks for your patience with my technical difficulty. <laughs> I know. I'm so happy that it worked out at the end. I know. I was like, I really wanted to hear what she had to say. Like. <laughs> There goes 
Yes, and persistence. Exactly. So everyone, I want to say a huge thank you to all of the sponsors. We're sponsored by Chef Uniforms. Just call me Chef. We're sponsored by OC Designs. Um, we're sponsored by My Fabulous Food, and we're giving away some amazing prizes. So everyone who RSVP'd is going to be put in the raffle, and we'll announce the raffle winners probably this weekend. So stay tuned for that, and then tomorrow stay tuned for the photography session. So if you guys have any questions, everyone who RSVP'd received a newsletter, so you have all of our social links. Please do reach out and stay in touch with us. All right, guys, stay safe. Stay safe. Thank you. <laughs> Take care.